release of the conference in Lumini, February 2013, published in 2014 by the Lumini International Research Institute in Nepal. Please, uh, Professor Sony, please uh, take the dais. I have not taken any privilege in speaking before my wife. It just turned out to be so. And I crave your attendance. And apart from a slight change in the abstract that I gave you on page 13, you will see that I have changed the content a little bit. As I said in my abstract, unlike the Buddhist view that the Buddha set in motion the, be the law of beings and things with his first sermon in Banaras, as recorded in the famous Dhammachaka of Atana Sutta, which you can find many versions of, for example, in the Samyutta Nikaya. The Jainas, on the other hand, believe that the law of beings and things is eternal and has always been so. All the Jinas, including the last Mahavira, who was Buddha's contemporary, reiterate this law, which for the Jainas essentially remains unchanged. The word dharma here, translated as law, is a complex term which in the Indian tradition is used in several senses. It is the dharma of a plant to grow in a particular way and to serve as food for animals. It is the dharma of certain animals to be praised and to be preyed upon. It is also the dharma of fire to burn, transform, and for the Brahmins, to carry the oblations to the gods. When dharma is considered to mean religion as well, and in a broader sense, philosophy, then it is certainly, certainly not in these specific terms, but rather as an extension of the universal law or rule implicit in them, or in the sense of the traditional views concerning the nature of beings and things in a particular tradition. In Jainism, dharma means at least two different things. On the one hand, dharma signifies, signifies the Jaina doctrine of beings and things as a whole, namely from the perspectives such as the ontological, epistemological, cosmological, and soteriological. In other words, what we call Jainism, the Jainas themselves call Jaina Dharma, and the term encompasses not only philosophy and religion, but also, among other things, the cosmology, social obligations, and Jain universal history. The word dharma in this sense is used in exactly the same way as when one speaks of brahmana or baudha dharma. On the other hand, the word dharma is used in a special technical way by the Jainas with its negative form adharma. Dharma and adharma refer to two entities responsible for motion and rest. These terms are used in a unique way and they feature in the context of Jaina ontology and metaphysics, so it is clear that we are concerned with the essence of basic Jaina philosophy, as we shall see in a moment. One of the Mula Sutras of the Jaina Kanon, the Dashavekalika Sutra, begins with the declaration that Dharma, the law, consists of Ahimsa, Samyama, and Tapas. And even the gods bow down to one who abides by this law. Dharma is translated as law here by Padmanabh Jaini, and the reason for this quote is to show you that uh, one can quite legitimately translate dharma as law as I am doing here. 
Even this simple and well-known position, summarizing Jainism, draws on basic Jaina philosophy. And if we are, have time, we, we can discuss uh, the question of the uh, metaphysical foundation of non-violence and also the need to practice austerity derived from it. The first attempt to present Jaina Dharma in the form of the classical Sanskrit sutras of the other schools of Indian philosophy was done by one Umaswati or Umaswami, perhaps of the 4th or 5th century, not later than that period, in his so-called pro-canonical work called the Tattvartha Sutra or the Tattvartha Digama Sutra, of which there are two versions, one Shvetambara version and one Digambara version. This text is basic for Jaina philosophy and has the status, for example, that uh, Badarayana's Vedanta Sutra has for Vedanta and any of the other basic sutra that works for the other schools. It is the first work written in Sanskrit summarizing the whole of Jaina philosophy. Indeed, there have been successful attempts, attempts to deal with Jaina thought in the Prakrit language as well. For example, by Kunda Kunda, and I will be quoting from him, whose dates vary according to research uh, done according to um, suggestions by some scholars in the recent period. Uh, his dates date from the 2nd to the 8th centuries, and Siddhasena Divakara of the 5th century, who have written um, very profound works in the Prakrit language. Unusual to have serious philosophical discussions in the Prakrit language. For the purpose of presenting the Jaina Dharma as the law of beings and things here, Umaswati's work will be taken as the chief source. Both the Gambaras and Shvetambaras regard this work as authoritative, despite the two different versions of the text. Philosophically, however, the differences of opinion are minor because the basic doctrine is accepted by both, and both regard Umaswati as originally belonging to their own traditions. There is, however, an ongoing debate about the authorship of the first commentary of this work. According to the Digambaras, it was Puja Pada of the 6th century who wrote the first commentary, and we heard this name, Sarvata Siddhi. And the Shvetambaras say that Umaswati has written an auto commentary, and there one finds lots of differences, which uh, I will not go into here. But when I give two numbers for the sutra, I would refer first to the Digamara version and then to the Shvetambara version. The law of beings and things in Umaswati's Tattvata Sutra is grounded on a traditional ontology and metaphysics, which in their origin are traceable at least to Mahavira's times. The themes it deals with clearly show how Jaina Dharma is presented in a way which applies to all beings, by that I mean jivas, and to all things, by that I mean a jiva. And a jiva itself is a general term for five categories that together are referred to as Ajiva. So you either say the Ajiva categories or the five Ajiva categories.
as the title itself suggests, the work deals with the meaning, artha, of tattvas. And tattvas can be translated as categories. And here it means categories of reality, categories of what exists. And so these two encompass both beings and things. Umaswati lists the seven basic categories of Jaina ontology and metaphysics. And let's have a look at his sutra. Here you see very clearly the jiva, dravya, the category of the sentient, and a jiva dravya, the non-sentient principle. I haven't listed the five here, but uh, I'll be talking about that. And we heard Swamiji mention the others in his uh, talk. What I will be concentrating on here is the term astrava, the influence or the influx. That's what astrava means, but you have to add to it the influx of matter. Where does matter come in? Matter comes in as an ajiva category. One of the five that we will come across just now. And here, matter has a very specific reference because you have different kinds of matter from very fine, invisible mm. particles of matter to the gross forms of matter. So when we are talking about matter flowing in When we are talking about the inflow or the flowing in of matter, we are talking about the flowing in of fine, invisible particles of matter. And one of the unique interpretations that we have of matter is that when this matter becomes associated with the soul, it covers the soul and depending on the density of the karma particles, the soul can manifest its functions better or less. And if the karma particles are so thick that the soul becomes burdened by it, there is very little it can know, there is very little it can do, and also very little that it can believe in. So if you don't believe in Jainism, then it means that you have these particles of matter that obscure your belief in a particular system. But that is not all. The unique factor is that these particles of matter become transformed into karma. How that happens I cannot tell you, but I believe the text which says that these fine particles of matter because of activity that the soul naturally has leads to an influx and a streaming in of these particles of matter. They remain there and they have an effect sooner or later. And if they have an effect sooner or later, then we have the link between matter as particles of matter to becoming karma. Because karma means that you have seeds of action which later on bear fruit, sooner or later, depending on what type of plant you have. They can grow very quickly and bear fruit. Or at some later time. Uh, the, the others are logically very simple to follow. Uh, because you have this inflow or influx of matter onto the soul, the soul becomes bound by it. Basic logic. And because the Jainas say 
that the soul can be cleansed of matter that flows into it, it makes this a basic truth. It's one of the seven basic truths in Jaina ontology. So the first two make up Jaina ontology, and the rest, three to seven, make up Jaina metaphysics. So it leads to bondage that it can be stopped. So if you know the mechanism of inflow of matter, obviously, you can conduct yourself in such a way that, theoretically at least, you can stop the inflow of matter. And if you do that, no matter is flowing in, but you already have a store of matter that was there before you realized you can interfere with the inflow of matter. So what do you do with that? You can remove it. This is a sixth basic truth. <coughs> you might ask, how do you know that you can remove it? Because Mahavira said so. He removed all the karmas that were hindering the manifestation of his soul. And so he was a human being like we are. He did it. Why can't we? And his teaching is what we are trying to emulate as best as we can. And if we do that, if we can cleanse the soul of all its um, particles of matter, it becomes purified. And then the natural tendency, as we said, of the soul is that it shoots up. to sit the loka, as we heard from you, Mira. Thank you for making it easier for me now. <laughs> <coughs> so this is um, moksha can be reached, as Buddhists say, as the Hindus also say, but in quite a different worldview. The term Ajiva, as I said, stands for five categories. And this is the Tata Sutra 5.1. Uh, the insentient bodies are dharma, adharma, space or ether, and matter. So you can see, so insentient bodies are ajiva kayaha, and you have dharma, adharma, akasha, and udgala. Time is also regarded as a udgala. But it is mentioned in the Tattvata Sutra later on in chapter 5. There is an interesting debate in the commentary why it's not included there. So, <coughs> so sometimes when you read a Sanskrit text, you do have to look at different sections. But very often, things that belong together are put together. And if they are not put together, there is a specific reason why not. If we cannot find it in the commentaries, <clears throat> we can make our own uh, presumptions about why it was so. But uh, when it's there in the text itself, then um, there's no need to discuss it. Uh, because the, the commentaries say that time has a special status, a little bit different from uh, these other four, dharma, dharma, akasha, and putgala. So it's taken separately because of its very specific nature.
as human beings, we are unique in that we are not only constituted of a material body, here, Budgala as matter, material body, in a gross form, made up and part of the non-sentient material world, but that we also possess a sentient principle which radically and essentially distinguishes us from matter. That is to say, the principle of sentience underscores the defining feature of our existence. We are endowed with consciousness as our essence, without which the material body would be an inanimate, dead thing. Consciousness expresses itself through the material body, whose nature it does not share, neither essentially nor intrinsically. Further, the human being di distinguishes himself or herself from other living creatures like plants and animals through the degree of the manifestation of consciousness by means of the various senses at his or her disposal. The category of jiva is distinguished from a jiva, which is a gentle term for five insentient categories, as I just said. which are also substances, dravya. I think I mentioned that here. I deliberately used the term dravya here for both jiva and ajiva. And I want to concentrate on this term dravya, because to say dravya is not just dravya low. Dravya means substance. Substance in philosophical jargon has a very special status. It is something that you cannot ask um, the reason for assuming if someone says jiva and ajiva are substances for us. What you can do is um, you might say, okay, there could be other dravyas apart from jiva and ajiva, but you cannot tell the opponent to accept another one when he says, I am only accepting this one principle. The charvakas, for example, say, I accept only sense perception as the valid means of knowledge. You cannot tell him, why don't you accept inference as well? If he tells you, this is my standpoint, then you have to criticize him on the basis of his standpoint. So if he says, I am accepting prataksha, perception, as the only means of valid knowledge, then you have to show him that his position is insufficient or is the ideal way to conduct life in the world. If it is the ideal way, then you have to accept it. If not, within the principle of accepting perception as the only means of knowledge, you have to show him that this is insufficient for carrying on life in the world. How do you do that? This is the genius of the development of ideas in Indian thought because you cannot criticize the other person merely by telling him to accept something, but by showing him on the basis of his own line of reasoning a certain logical fault or failure, reasonably logical or um, erroneous way of thinking. So how do you show the Charvaka. It's very simple if you've read a, a little bit of commentarial literature in Indian philosophy. The, uh, the Charvaka says, I don't accept anything else apart from perception as 
the valid means of knowledge, you ask him, show me. Where can I see that? And so it means that the charlaka is using inference to come to this conclusion that perception for me is the only valid means of knowledge. So this is the, the genius of the development of Indian thought in my perception. Not only uh, the, the value of such an approach, but also the standpoint where you start from. You start from what someone else may say as a criticism of your view and you answer the other person and then come to your own final judgment. So, Purva Paksha and Uttara Paksha. I have to mention a little bit about Dharma and Adharma because uh, these are unique categories in Jaina metaphysics. They are responsible for motion and rest respectively. And the use in this technical way is unique to Jainism as I said. These terms are explained as mediums through which things can move or remain static without themselves, dharma and dharma, changing in any way. Just as water itself does not make a fish stop or move, but makes these activities possible, so too Dharma and a dharma make it possible without themselves changing in any way and they offer beings and things the condition for the possibility of movement and rest. So we heard about the Jaina world, Loka. A Loka does not have dharma and a dharma. That is why nothing takes place there. Dharma and a dharma are only within loka. Space or ether is used in two senses by the Jainas. One is that it is a category which divides, which provides the place where beings and things can exist without itself occupying a separate space or place. And space is the place itself in which it is and in which other categories can be. On the other hand, space is divided into what is called loka and aloka. And about this we heard quite a fair amount of detail. Putgala is is what I have translated here as matter. It is defined by Umasvati in Tatvata Sutra 5, 19 or 20 in the Shvatamara version. The function of matter is to form the basis of the body and the organs of speech and mind and respiration. The function of matter is also to contribute to pleasure, suffering, life, and death of living beings. Matter is seen as identical with what constitutes is its base, its fundamental unit, namely the atom, the concept of Anu or Paramanu, which can combine with other atoms to form conglomerates of various kinds of things, including various kinds of bodies. The crucial role of the atoms for beings is that they provide the place for the souls to inhabit until their final liberation. In this way, the Jainas can speak of living earth, living water, living fire, and living 
air atoms. In other words, in the practice of non-violence, great care has to be taken in one's contact with them so as not to injure them in any way. The forms of matter are characterized by touch, taste, smell, and so on. Uh, unique to Jaina Dharma is that the following are also regarded